Uh, the story out of Maui is certainly one that is absolutely devastating. The number of people killed, we still don't have a final death toll. The damage estimates. We know 100 people are confirmed dead from those wildfires that destroyed more than 2,000 structures, homes, and other buildings, some over a century old. Authorities estimating it could cost over $5 billion to rebuild the popular destination of Lahaina alone. But this morning, a sign of hope for those who are praying for Maui's recovery. Maria Lanakila Catholic Church, it opened more than 175 years ago. Look at that beautiful structure, is still standing tall untouched by the flames. Reverend Monsignor Terence Watanabe is here live with me. Uh, good morning to you, Reverend. Thank you for being here. You know, this church standing since 1846, that's just amazing. Spared yes. while well, all the other buildings around it seem to be destroyed. Was somebody praying that the church would be untouched or was everyone shocked when they went to the property after that fire rolled through? <laughs> I think they were shocked. I mean, we really see this as an incredible miracle, so to speak. Uh, you know, spiritually, we always, you know, look for uh, the presence of God in our world, whether it's a rainbow or whether, you know, it's other people's loving uh, love for us or whatever. You know, we always, it's nice to know that God is with us and that his love and his presence is there. Yeah. Uh, it is amazing because right behind the church um, is the convent and the preschool and two two uh, classroom uh, two school buildings plus the parish hall and all of that burned. Wow. The church, the church and the rectory next door to the church did not burn. And Father Kuikose, who's the pastor there, went into uh, the church um, two days after, and the inside of the church nothing is touched. There's no damage. And the even greater thing was the fact that there were flowers at the foot of the altar, and those flowers were not withered from the heat. I mean, you just keep on giving more evidence of mercy uh, over that yeah, chapel. Exactly. It reminds me of the 17th century St. Paul's Chapel in New York City, which George Washington, historically, he prayed inside after being sworn in right. as president. Somehow it was not damaged, even though it's next door to the World Trade Towers on 9-11. Uh, it became a place of consolation for emergency responders. Is the same thing happening at your church? Are people coming uh, in spite of maybe losing everything, in spite of the fact that perhaps they can't go home, but they can come uh, to pray? Yeah. My church is actually St. Anthony's in Wailuku, which is on the other side of the island. We're in central Maui. But at uh, Maria Lanakila, um, there, they, the government, you know, nobody can go into the town yet. Oh, okay. So Maria Lanakila has another church, which is out in Kapalua. So uh, this past Sunday, yes, the other day, uh, Bishop and I and a few other priests, we were able to get in with the permission of the Maui Police Department uh, to go and celebrate mass with the parishioners uh, at eight o'clock in the morning on Sunday. Well, that's uh, lovely. So that was a wonderful experience, yeah. And it was just tragic and heart-wrenching to hear their stories mm -hmm. and all the, you know, all that they've been through and how some of them even were trapped in their car because the traffic backed up and they actually got out of their car and ran through the flames in order to get out. And I, they, I, they were saying... I, I can't imagine uh, just feeling of, of just utter despair. Really quickly, uh, Reverend, can you just yes. pray a little prayer uh, for those who are struggling? I, I think that many people would want to hear what you, uh, being there in Maui, uh, would say about uh, what they need and, and, and what their hope should be in. Yeah, I'd be happy to do that. Uh, one of the things I think that's important for people to understand is, you know, because sometimes when these kinds of tragedies happen, we, you know, just kind of wonder how could God, the good God, let all this kind of tragedy take place. And I think, you know, what's important is, you know, you can be angry with God, you know, he's a big boy and he can handle it, so no problem. But I think, you know, the worst thing would be, uh, you know, to give God the silent treatment and not talk to him. And, uh, you know, this past Sunday's gospel, when we read it at the church was incredible because basically it was Jesus calling on Peter to walk on water. And, uh, you know, Peter stepped out of the boat and trusted in the Lord and started to walk on water uh, but then when the winds came, you know, he started to sink. Uh, but, um, you know, God, Jesus was there to pull him back out of the water. So, you know, two things. One is that that's what we're being challenged to do, I think, uh, is the fact that, um, you know, uh, the Lord's calling us to, to walk on water and do the impossible, but at the same time to trust in him. 
And yes, there are going to be times of doubt and fear because this is long range for us, the work that is ahead of us. And, you know, there are going to be times when we doubt and we're, you know, but hopefully we continue to turn to the Lord and continue to call out to him. And Peter called out and said, Lord, save me. And hopefully we keep doing that as well to save these people and save us. Yeah. Yeah. And certainly hope that people who are displaced, people who don't know where their loved ones are, that they get reconnected very soon. Reverend Monsignor Terrence Watanabe, thank you uh, very much thank for being with us. Thank you so much. Early this appreciate morning. It. Yes, we appreciate you. you. Wow. God bless. Wow. Fantastic to see that church still standing. Yeah. A blessing. And to hear his words of wisdom and inspiration and hope. Yeah. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.